So if you've ever watched any of our helmet spotlight videos or even some of our helmet buyer's guides, then you know that in each one of those videos, we always say what safety rating each helmet has. DOT, 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 ECE, DOT, ECE, ECE, ECE or DOT and SNELL. can be DOT and SNELL rated. But how much thought do we really put into that? Have you ever wondered what the difference is between DOT, ECE, and SNELL? Is one of those helmet safety ratings better than the other? Just because a helmet, say, is SNELL certified, does that mean that it's safer and will protect you better than a helmet that is just DOT or just ECE? Today we're gonna to help you answer some of those questions to help you make an educated decision the next time you're shopping for a helmet. So the first question is, well, what are these helmet safety ratings? Now in a nutshell, what these ratings are, are test standards that the helmet manufacturers will build their helmets to meet. Now in our industry, there are three main standards. You have DOT, you have ECE, and you have Snell. Now all three of these were put in place to do something very important to make sure the helmet's doing its job, which is protect your head. And ultimately what it comes down to is the helmet's ability for the shell and the EPS liner to absorb impact in the event that you do have a crash. Now that being said, there are different opinions and theories out there about which one of these safety ratings is the best, so let's dive in a little bit deeper and talk about these ratings. Now the most common safety standard that we see here in the US is DOT, which stands for Department of Transportation, and the official name is FMVSS 218, which is Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standard. For a helmet to be legal to ride on the road in the US, it must be DOT compliant. Now the DOT standard was created way back in 1974, and what may surprise some people is that this standard has never been updated since it was implemented. Now to give you an idea of just how long ago 1974 was, a gallon of gas was 42 cents, a cup of coffee was 35, and if you were lucky enough to have a computer, well, this is what it looked like. Now what's interesting about the DOT standard as well is that it's the only one of the three we're talking about that allows helmets to be sold to the public before they're actually tested, so it's the honor code. A helmet manufacturer is required to send their helmet to a third party and to see if it passes the standard. And if it does, they then can put a DOT sticker on the back of the helmet according to the DOT standard and then sell them to the public. Now the DOT, to keep these helmet companies in check, will pull random samples off the shelf whenever they want and they will test those helmets to see if they are compliant with their standard. Now it's in the best interest of the helmet manufacturer to make sure that they do pass the DOT standard because if they don't, well, they can face some pretty hefty fines. The second safety standard we're talking about is ECE, and the official name is ECE 2205. Now this name stands for the Economic Commission of Europe, and this is actually the most widely accepted safety rating across the entire world. Now this rating has also been around for over 20 years, but in 2023 it's set to get an update and go to ECE 2206. Now just like the DOT standard, the ECE is a government agency, but unlike DOT, ECE requires mandatory batch testing before they allow their helmets to be sold to the public. And the third standard is Snell. And Snell is the Snell Memorial Foundation. And this is actually a nonprofit organization that was started back in 1957. And it was started after William Pete Snell, who was a race car driver, died in an unfortunate accident from head injuries. Now the Snell standard is often referred to as the most rigorous and the hardest safety standard for a helmet to pass. And another unique fact about Snell is that it's voluntary. If a helmet manufacturer wants their helmet to be Snell certified, they have to send it to Snell to see if it passes their standards, which is not cheap. So why would companies like Orai or Bell or Troy Designs pay to have their helmet Snell certified? Well, these companies believe that by having that Snell approved sticker on the back of their helmet, they're letting the public know that their helmet meets what they believe is the hardest helmet safety standard to pass and they make a very safe helmet. Now on the contrary, you have companies like Fox, Fly, or even 6D that don't have their helmet Snell certified. Now this doesn't necessarily mean that their helmet wouldn't meet the Snell certification. These helmet manufacturers don't see the need to spend the extra money or effort to have their helmet Snell certified. Now there might be other reasons, but we're not gonna get into that right now. Now once a helmet is Snell approved, it doesn't end there. Snell still does random testing on their helmets that they've already tested to make sure that they are staying compliant with their test standards. Now the last thing I do want to say about Snell is that right now the official name 
is M2020, and they update their standards every five years. So in 2025, we'll see the next update to the Snell standard. So first up is impacts. Now, while three organizations test their helmets by taking a head form, putting it inside of a helmet, and then dropping that helmet from a predetermined height or speed onto what is called an anvil. But this does not mean that all tests are created equal. Impact severity, impact criteria, and the number of tests performed vary from each helmet safety rating and the way that they are doing those tests. So let's break those down. Now an anvil is a solid piece of metal that comes in a variety of shapes. And to know whether or not a helmet passes that standard is by measuring the peak acceleration or the acceleration pulse of the head form inside the helmet. And the way they do that is by using a whole bunch of sensors on the head form inside the helmet. In other words, how much energy does the shell and the EPS liner of the helmet allow to be transferred to the rider's head? Now upon impact, if the peak acceleration is below the maximum allowed, the helmet passes. Now even though they all do their impact tests in a similar way, they all still do things a little bit differently. And that can have you scratch your head wondering, well, which one is better? DOT uses a flat and a hemispherical anvil and has a threshold of 400 G's at impact. Snell uses a flat, hemispherical, and edge anvil with a threshold of 275 to 243 G's depending on the size of the head form. As you can see, that's quite a bit lower than DOT. ECE uses a flat and a curbstone anvil. If you're not familiar with a curbstone, well, it's similar to an A-frame roof that is slightly rounded on top. Now, like Snell, ECE also has a threshold of 275 G's. Now, although ECE and Snell have the same threshold, this does not mean that they're equal. They both drop their helmets close to the same speed, but according to Snell, the hemispherical anvil that they and DOT use causes a greater impact force than a flat or a curbstone anvil that ECE uses. Because an impact, the hemispherical anvil concentrates the impact to a smaller area. Think of it this way, if you were to slap your hand down on a golf ball versus a flat table, the golf ball is going to hurt a lot more since the impact is on a much smaller point. All three organizations do impact testing at four locations on the helmet. However, only DOT and Snell do two impacts per location. They want to make sure that the helmet can absorb two blows to the same spot in the same crash. Now, some may argue that it's almost impossible to have an impact at the exact same spot on the helmet two times in one crash, but the key word here is almost. Now, I'm sure some of you watching this have heard people say that the Snell standard forces companies to make their shells too stiff and their EPS liners too thick to where they can absorb impacts at those lower speeds. Now, this is not something that I would be worried about because Snell has purposely tested helmets that were already Snell certified using the DOT criteria and they passed that test no problem. Another thing that we've noticed lately is the trend on helmets getting lighter and lighter. Now, the theory behind this is that the more you can reduce the weight of the helmet, the less energy that is transferred to the rider's head in the event of an impact. Now, this makes sense. Less mass equals less energy. Now, Snell helmets are known to be a little bit heavier. That's because Snell helmets tend to have a more rigid shell and a thicker or a more dense EPS liner to absorb those high energy impacts, which results in a heavier helmet. Now on the flip side of that, the lightest helmets that we see are ECE only. And many people argue that the reason that ECE helmets are so lightweight is because the helmet manufacturers know exactly where those impact tests are going to occur on the shell. And in theory, this means that the helmet maker could beef up the shell and the EPS liner just in those areas where the impact will occur while saving weight and money and materials in the other parts of the helmet. Also, you have to remember, like we said earlier, ECE does not use that hemispherical anvil like DOT and Snell. Now, aside from the impact testing that we just covered, all three organizations do several other tests that are required to pass their standard. All three organizations test the retention strap on the helmet. That's to make sure it doesn't come off when you have a crash. DOT and Snell do a penetration test, which ECE does not, but ECE does a crush and abrasion test that the other two don't. The abrasion test is to ensure that nothing on the helmet could possibly catch and add additional forces to the head or to the rider's neck. So with all this information that we just gave you, it begs the question, which safety standard is the best? And unfortunately, there's no real answer to that. They all do their tests similarly, but different at the same time. 
And ultimately what it boils down to is you as the rider doing your research and deciding and making an educated decision of which safety standard or standards you want your helmet to have. Now keep in mind also that different race organizations may require that your helmet have certain safety standards, so it's important to do your research on that as well. Now the last thing I want to say is that regardless of what safety rating your helmet has, I don't care how much it costs or what safety technology is inside that thing, it's got to fit you correctly to do its job. So make sure always use the sizing guides on the product pages. We have a sizing guide video where we show you how to properly measure your head. We also give some tips on how to know if a helmet does fit correctly. So make sure to utilize those tools when shopping for your next helmet. And ultimately, it's up to you as the rider, like we said earlier, to do your research and decide what helmet's gonna fit you correctly, meet your needs as a rider, and what safety rating you want your helmet to have. Now, if you do have questions or comments about anything we talked about today, leave those below, and we wanna hear your thoughts. What safety rating do you feel is best? We want you to tell us in the comments below. Now, from all of us here at Rocky Mountain ATVMC, I am Chase, and we'll see you on the trails.